Good morning. Good morning. Wow, everybody's got such energy this morning. Welcome to Deerfield Community Church. I'm Jennifer Hurley, the Discipling Deacon. Our church is an open and affirming congregation, which means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. A few announcements. There are two cards in the pews. Uh, one is for prayer requests and one is a welcome card. Please fill out either or both as needed. Go ahead and put in the offering plate <clears throat> later in the service. Today after worship, the Deeper Dive will be meeting um, uh, in the parlor uh, right after worship. So grab your coffee and a snack and head on in there. If you're interested in talking more about today's worship um, with other folks, that's what this group does. Thank you to all who attended Wednesday Word and Wonder this past week. The series will continue this coming Wednesday, July 3rd at 6 p.m. in the Great Room. Uh, the church office will be closed for the 4th of July holiday, so if you have anything that needs to be in the EDCC this week, you need to email Lori by uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday, July 2nd. So um, just be mindful of that because she'll be wrapping it up then. Um, Horton Center, which we all know and love, is in search of a female counselor for the week of July 6th through the 13th. That's not next week, but the week after. Um, so they're really heavily looking for someone. Um, anyone over the age of 17 would qualify as long as you like working with kids. If you want to see me, uh, that is an important part of summer camp counseling, right? Um, and I'll connect you with the Dean of the Week. Um, two of the people up there are familiar to many of you, Gary Winslow is a co-dean that week and Susan Winslow is one of the counselors that week so um, maybe one of you would like to join them up there um, July 6th through the 13th so let me know if you're interested in connecting with them and um, Bo is getting some outdoor enthusiasts together for his ESP exciting summer program so if you are interested in doing some things outside together kayaking hiking biking picnicking Probably, right? Anything like that? See Bo after church, and um, he will be working on coordinating some people together for that. Um, please refer to the bulletin insert, which has many other upcoming events and information. And with that, let us prepare ourselves to worship together. Please stand as you're able and join us in our opening hymn. So, can you hold on one second, Amy? So in your bulletin, do you see an affirmation of belonging? Do you not see that in unison? Okay, you do see that. Okay, phew. Because last week I forgot it, and I apologize. And I want to start this week with it. And I read it, and I read it like a hundred times, and I was like, maybe we should just start every week with this. So like, I wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and just read this, right? So let's do this together, okay? An affirmation of belonging. I am an equally precious and worthy child of God. I am a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. I am child of God, created in love and worthiness. I am seen, I am heard, and I am you know, as I am. I am diverse, and my gifts are unique. And God celebrates me for who I am. 
I bring my whole self to God, my joys, my struggles, my hopes, and my dreams. I am welcomed. I am cherished without condition. I belong. I am connected to each person here and to all of creation. In unison with God, I find strength, purpose. Amen. Now we can sing. In the face of changing ways, who will lead the pilgrims' peoples wandering in their separate ways? Thought of flood of starry people, warring faction and despair. Who will lift the olive branches? Who will light the flame? Okay, that didn't work out well. Through the flood of stormy wind, and seeking streams, grant that we, your global village, might envision flame and dreams. God of rainbow, fiery pillar, lead thee where the eagles soar. People, ours the journey now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. We are men and we are praise old and young, each a gift in your creation. God of rainbow, fiery pillar, leading where the eagles soar. We are people, ours our journey, now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. <laughs> Repeat chorus. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. We gather together, seeking the presence of the divine in our midst. We come together, believing in the power of our faith to heal and transform. God calls us to break through our barriers, to embrace vulnerability, knowing it strengthens our community and deepens our relationships. We affirm the dignity of every person, offering love and acceptance. Let us worship with open hearts and minds, ready to be transformed by love and grace. With courage and faith, we come before God. Amen. Please be seated. We now come to the time in our worship service when we give ourselves the opportunity to raise up our prayers of concern and celebration to God amidst God's people. Um, I have a couple this morning, and then we'll open it for others as well. Our prayers uh, for my mother. She was in the hospital this week um, from Monday until yesterday, and she's doing much better, and she's home, but she's home alone, so please continue to pray for her. Please keep her in your prayers. Um, Dee Jones' daughter-in-law um, was in the hospital this week down in Georgia, um, but is home now and was suffering from pancreatitis. Uh, please continue to keep her in your prayers. Those are the prayers I have this morning. Are there others? I'd like to ask for prayers for our daughter, Jean, who is suffering from a very bad back pain. Mm. Thank you, Sue. 
members, uh, thanks for the um, intentional, the intentionality, that's a big word, that uh, goes into the selection of our prayers and our songs and everything that goes into the worship. It, it keeps us coming back each week. So big thank you. Thank for you for that. that encouragement, Jeannie. I appreciate that. Um, prayers of celebration that I had my basketball camp this week and I got first place in foul shots out of 16 people. I made seven out of 10 of them. And then we had um, team champions and we got first from that by winning seven out of the eight games. Nice, thank you, Emma. Um, prayers for my friend Judy, who is um, struggling to recover from a stroke. Debbie. Prayers of thankfulness. The swap shop yesterday was absolutely fabulous. Everybody that came found something that they could use. <laughs> Some things didn't even get out of cars, it just went into another car. It was just a fabulous, wonderful morning. Nice. Thank you, Dee. Well, I, through the grace of God, got a new car, and now I can go the more than five miles <laughs> radius. And um, I want to thank everybody here for helping me through a day at a time. Thank you. Sandy. Safe travels for my family who's coming from all different directions to get together next weekend. And for everybody who's traveling, not just my family. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Charlotte. The safe travels for my granddaughter, Rose, who's traveling to Belize early in the morning tonight. <laughs> um, and also a prayer of gratitude. Um, Melissa had a good clean scan, so, so thankful for that. Yes, that was huge. That's good news. Thank you, Susan. Suzanne, there are people on Zoom, right? But I can't see them. So folks on Zoom, I can't see you this morning, but I know you're there. So do you have any prayer requests this morning? If you do, please just unmute yourself and let us know what those might be and who you are. <laughs> Hi, this is Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Good morning, everyone. And I'm hoping that we will have lovely weather this afternoon, even though there are predictions of uncertainty. Um, when we all gather for Jeff Steele's memorial service this afternoon. I love you, Suzanne. Thank you. Uh, those of you who couldn't hear that, we um, were having a celebration of life for Jeff Steele's uh, life today up on top of Gunstock. So pray for good weather up there this afternoon. Any other prayers or concerns? Yes, Patricia. Nice. We're going to say New York City Ballet. Prayers for Patricia requests prayers for Stella, um, who is on a camp trip this week, I guess, tra camp trip to New York City with the New York City Ballet. Summer intensive, a summer intensive, <laughs> a summer intensive. Okay, all right, make sure I write that down. All right, any other prayers on Zoom this morning? All right, hearing and seeing no other prayers, let's pray together. 
loving and gracious God, bringing our whole selves to you, we are mindful of the many challenges and blessings that fill our lives and our world. We come before you with our joys, our sorrows, our strengths, and our vulnerabilities. Help us to embody the faith that requires courageous vulnerability in our lives, trusting that your grace will meet us in our most vulnerable moments. For those suffering due to natural disasters, conflict, or tragedy, we ask for your comfort and peace. We pray for communities rebuilding after storms, for families torn apart by violence, and for those who feel the weight of injustice and oppression. Grant all your strength and resilience and move us to act with compassion and support. We ask for the courage and strength to show up and be seen even when it is difficult. Help us to create a community where everyone feels safe to be their true selves, where we can share our struggles and triumphs without fear of judgment. May our church be a place of radical acceptance and love, reflecting the inclusive spirit of Christ. We pray for our leaders, that they may govern with wisdom and compassion, always seeking the common good. We remember those who are marginalized and oppressed, and we commit ourselves to working for justice and equity. Empower us to be instruments of your peace, standing up for what is right and showing love in all we do. As we go forth from this place, may we carry with us the lessons of faith and courage that grant us the gift of living wholeheartedly. May we support one another, lift each other up, and build a world where your love and justice reign. We pray this, O oh God, in your many good and loving names, in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our offering during, during our worship service, our offering is an opportunity to recognize our vulnerability. It is an opportunity for us to recognize that we alone can do nothing if not with God. This morning's offering will now begin.
with me this prayer of dedication. Loving God, we dedicate these gifts to you, trusting in your abundant grace to use them for the healing and transformation of the world. May our offerings reflect our commitment to support and uplift one another in faith. Bless these gifts and our lives that we may embody your inclusive love and justice in all we do. Amen. Please be seated. Those who are interested in coming forward for Jennifer's message of all ages, please come. to see you all this morning. Um, so this morning, I was going to talk to you about um, getting help from people. Because I sometimes want to help people who don't really need help. Does anybody ever want to help people who don't really need help? And here, yeah, you do? You just love helping people? You do love everybody? Oh, that's is this coming and going? <laughs> okay, we'll try this one. So here's what I'm thinking about. Sometimes we see someone struggling and they need to be, figure it out, right? Sometimes they're working really hard to figure it out. And so you have to kind of let them figure it out. Even if you're like, I can really fix that problem. Right? Sometimes you have to wait. But here's something I like to do if I see someone that has a problem that I think I can fix faster, better, any of those things more than they can. Here, quicker, yeah. Yeah. Here's what I think. Here's what I try to say. Let me know if you need me. Right? Because now I've said, I'm available to help you. And I've said, you're in charge of when you need help. So that's a really great thing to say. Let me know if you need me, right? Because I don't have to fix the things. But here's a really important part. If you're the, pro if you're the person with the problem and you just think, I can do it myself, but maybe that help would be good, sometimes we're afraid to say, I need you. So maybe you want to pick up something that's really heavy and you just feel like, I can pick up this really heavy thing. We have a bucket of magnetiles. Do you guys know what magnetiles are in my classroom? Magnetiles are these really cool, most popular toy ever invented, plastic tiles that have magnets in the corner, so they stick together magnetically to build things. And our bin is about this, it's only about this deep, but it's about this big. So if you are three and your arms are this big, it's hard to carry something that's this big. But sometimes the kids are like, I'm so strong, I can get it. And so they pick it up, but they can't quite get their arms around it. So they only kind of get their arms around the corners. And then what do you think happens? It falls. It falls. It, what, what did you say? Kerplunk. It absolutely falls and kerplunks. And the whole bucket tips. Because really, all the other kids that are like, I can help you, I can help you. And this one kid that's like, I can do it, they actually did need the help, but they wanted to do it so badly, so badly that they didn't say, okay, let's use teamwork. Let's use teamwork. Sometimes if we think, I don't need help, maybe you could think, 
I could use some teamwork. It makes it a little easier to ask for help that way. So next time you think, I can do it, but you're really struggling, think of it as, I could use some teamwork and let people help you work together to get the job done. Even if you're big and strong, you still probably need a little bit of help with things. Right? No? Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> I thought we had an argument up here. <laughs> All right, let's be together in prayer. God, thank you for all the ways we're growing and we're getting smarter and bigger and stronger and more capable and learning new things every day. No matter how old we are, we can continue to learn those things every day. Let us continue to love being helpful. And for those of us who need help, let us be that vulnerable person who can ask for help and say, yes, let's use teamwork to get this job done because working together is such a great blessing to have relationships and community with others. Amen. Okay. Um, you can return to your seats, and Mary and I are going upstairs to the nursery if you want to come play. Today's scripture lesson is from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say that to say to the, excuse me, which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Thank you, Wad. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we come to you today seeking wisdom, courage, and a deeper understanding of your call to live authentically. Open our hearts to the teachings of Jesus and the insights of those who inspire us to embrace vulnerability as a strength. May your spirit move among us, transforming our fears into faith and our wounds into sources of healing. Amen. <clears throat> Today, uh, in this second sermon of the sermon series on Brene Brown's Daring Greatly, we delve into the profound and transformative concept of courageous vulnerability. We live in a world that often celebrates invulnerability 
and self-sufficiency. Yet, as followers of Jesus, we are called to embrace a different path, a path where strength is found in our willingness to be open, honest, and vulnerable. In today's scripture reading, we find Jesus in Capernaum, the home base of his ministry, along the northern coast of the Sea of Galilee. And as is true with the entire Gospel of Mark, my favorite gospel, because it was the first gospel written, one of the things that we see about Mark is that it's such a short gospel that things move very quickly. You get this kind of feeling when you read Mark of this frantic, frenetic energy, this positive energy and force that is growing and growing rapid, rapidly as Mark continues to describe the growing number of people that continue to congregate around Jesus and Jesus' ministry. This story provides an indication as to how popular Jesus is becoming in that there are so many people inside that there is not enough room for anyone else to get in. Remember those house parties, parties in high school and college, right? It's like you try to open the door, but you can't because there's somebody against the door, right? The front yard is also jam-packed with people waiting to catch a glimpse of this young preacher and healer from Nazareth. And anxious to see their friend healed, four friends take, uh, friends take the extraordinary step of lowering their friend, this man who needs healing, into the house through the roof. Now, I had one house party in high school, and I only got into a little trouble because the house was mostly clean. But if anybody had tried to come into the house through the roof, I think my mother probably would have been a little upset. <laughs> Moved by their faith and courage, Jesus first reassures the man that he is forgiven, though we don't know for what. And apparently, the religious authorities of the day took offense, claiming that only God can forgive. Imagine if we lived in a world where only God could forgive. Classic Jesus, nonplussed, tells the man to stand up, take his mat, and go home. The man does so, and all are amazed, glorifying God after what they had witnessed. At its core, this story is a story of radical love through courageous vulnerability. Think about it. These friends, with the eyes of the public watching, destroyed the roof of a house in order to have their friend healed. They did not care about traditional religious, social, or behavioral conventions of the day. They only cared for their friend as they took a bold, <clears throat> excuse me, a bold and unconventional approach in doing so. Through this act of loving kindness and their willingness to be courageously vulnerable, they risked much. They risked judgment public ridicule, and maybe even disappointment if their faith in what they had heard about Jesus did not meet their lofty expectations. In Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly, she explores the transformative power of vulnerability. She writes, vulnerability is the core, the heart, the center of meaningful human experiences. Vulnerability is the core, the heart, and the center of meaningful human experiences. For Brown, vulnerability is not a sign of weakness, but a, me a measure of courage. She says, when we shut ourselves off from vulnerability, we distance ourselves from the experiences that bring purpose and meaning to our lives. In other words, if we are unable to be vulnerable, we wall ourselves off from the opportunity to build loving, caring relationships with other people. Brown has this overarching concept of what it means to live what she calls a wholehearted life. She believes that people who live wholeheartedly embrace vulnerability. 
folks who are able to allow themselves to be vulnerable are willing to let go of who they think they should be or who they think others think they should be in order to be who they are, who God made them to be, what many others over the past several centuries have called true self. These folks understand that vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, and creativity. Think about what it takes to meet a new person for the first time, whether that be somebody you're just interested in introducing yourself to, or maybe it's somebody you're attracted to and you want to get to know them better as a friend, as a lover, as a potential husband or wife. That all starts with vulnerability. Why do we have such a hard time wearing name tags in church? Because it's an invitation to vulnerability. That's why. Oh, everybody knows me. I don't need to wear my tag. That's a way of saying I'm putting up a wall between me and anybody else new here so that they can't introduce themselves to me or know my name. It requires me to come and introduce myself to them. And how often does that happen? Vulnerability is what is required for human relationships. True transformation comes from embracing our vulnerabilities and our limitations. It is not by being what humans perceive to be perfect or attempting to prove to everyone that you are perfect that allows us to experience the love of God. And this other thing too, and I know we've talked about perfection before, this whole idea of trying to prove to other human beings that you're perfect does only what? It attempts to prove to other human beings that you are not human. That's all that that does. We don't come into a relationship with God because we do everything well. We enter into a relationship with God with the knowledge and acceptance that we are not perfect, that we are human and messy, and sometimes we get it really wrong which causes us to ask God for assistance, to seek God's perfect grace and limitless mercy. As Paul put it in his second letter to the good folks of Corinth, God's grace is made perfect in our weakness. A friend of mine from seminary went on to become a staff member at Andover Newton at Yale. He's just been hired as a professor at another seminary in Virginia. And in a lengthy farewell poem he wrote of his experiences over the past 15 years, he expressed much vulnerability and openness about his lived experience. He, like many of us, know that any human who has ever lived a life worth living knows that joy can only truly be experienced in the sunrise that follows what I have recently begun to call all harrowing eaves. It is only when we face our traumas, our fears, the dark night of the soul, that we can really come to understand the powerful redemptive power of a new day at sunrise. It is when we choose to embrace vulnerability that we find healing and empowerment. It is a testament to the power of choosing courageous vulnerability that gives us the power to transform our pain into purpose and suffering into a source of strength and resilience. It is over the hard won healed wounds in which we are able to offer empathy and compassion and love to one another. That turns our heal hurts into healing and what Henry Nouwen called the wounded healer. Like those four friends, who took a chance on the power of Jesus to heal their friend, even if it meant risking laughter and being locked up. God calls us to embody courageous vulnerability in our community and our lives. 
God calls us to continue our goal of creating a sacred space where everyone feels safe to share their true selves, where we support one another in our struggles, and where, and where we celebrate the unique gifts each of us brings. What might courageous vulnerability look like? Maybe it means creating an opportunity for us to share a part of our personal stories during fellowship, faithfully trusting that we will be met with empathy and compassion and support. Maybe it means offering prayers and support for those facing difficult times without inadvertently passing judgment, smothering someone's story by placing your, your experience over theirs. Oh, you think that's bad? Well, Oh, yes, I went through that too, which sounds like empathy, but in the moment, it's not. It's just silencing. Or offering unsolicited advice, right? When does advice usually come? When it's not needed, right? Maybe it looks like encouraging one another to take risks in our spiritual journeys, trusting that God's grace will sustain us. In embracing courageous vulnerability, we follow the example of Jesus, who lived authentically and openly, even on the cross. In the story of the paralytic, we learn that vulnerability is a path to a more meaningful and connected life. We are reminded that our imperfections are actually gateways to God's grace. May we go forth from this place with hearts open, willing to be vulnerable, and trusting that in our courage we will find strength, healing, and deep connection with one another and with God. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing our closing hymn. God of love, Christ of compassion, spirit of strength, inspired by the call to live courageously, grant us the bravery to embrace our vulnerabilities, knowing that in our weakness, your strength is revealed. Empower us to dare greatly in our lives. 
trusting that your grace sustains us as we strive to be authentic, compassionate, and wholehearted. May we go forth, blessed by you, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, to live with courage and love. Amen.